uh, happy that uh, Ty Gilden showed that right before I came on, because that will help set the stage for so, some of what I'm going to show. So P22 Analog uh, is a bit of a side project. P22 Type Foundry has been around for 24 years. And um, the more I work digitally, the more I wanted to work with my hands. And so that's kind of how P22 Analog came along. So this is essentially a case study in more of a personal project. Uh, most of you are design educators. I consider myself a tangential design educator. I, I am the director of a book arts center in a small college that has an amazing set of resources. So I will just kind of show you the project and you can ask me questions afterwards too. So I think this idea kind of came from this, uh, this opportunity that presented itself to me and that was the acquisition of the remains of a letterpress print shop, a show card uh, print shop. If you know Hat Show Printing, they print, uh, you know, country music, classic, uh, iconic Americana. This print shop printed ads for Kleenex and toilet paper, and so it was for a variety store uh, signage. And one of the things that was in this collection was uh, pieces of type. I would call them broken type or modular type. And that got me thinking about uh, Joseph Albers and his uh, combination shrift and also his Schlebonen shrift, his stencil alphabets, and how the uh, alphabet could be built up from these basic shapes. And that, of course, led to the alpha blocks. The American type founders in the 1940s put out this set of uh, system where you could build your own letters, and, and both Albers and ATF pitched this idea that this was a time-saving, material-saving development. You'd have, you'd have less material to store. But as you can guess, putting these things together into usable shapes would maybe take a little more time than just setting from a type case. So um, I just started working with the basic ATF shapes, which is probably about 20 different shapes, and trying to pare it down to its most basic elements. And I, th I think I got as few as seven pieces, and I thought we could do an entire alphabets with seven basic shapes. And I knew the people at Virgin Wood Type, and I was trying to pitch this idea that, hey, we can make this. I, I mean, it was, it was sort of a personal project, and I thought, how can I get this stuff made? So um, I think the idea came up, and they, ended up doing their own modular wood type, which was actually based on uh, this Fregio Meccano. I think this was Nebbiolo, who, uh, is that right? Does anybody know this? I'm pretty sure it's Nebbiolo. Uh, Italian type foundry that did their own set of modular type. And this is what Virgin Wood Type's uh, modular was based on. Again, it's not seven shapes, it's about 14 shapes, I think. And so I went back and uh, the seven shapes uh, did not include a diagonal, and I realized that was a little bit of a limitation. So, uh, just proof of concept to see if I could actually make these, I hand carved a set of blocks to be printed via letterpress printing, and then took it to the next step of fabrication. We actually had 3D printer files made, and so I was able to print uh, with these blocks. They were made to be exactly one inch or 72 points, and uh, Wells College is not too far from Cornell, who has an uh, architecture fabrication lab, so I was able to kind of talk my way in there and get a little help in producing these. So I was able to make these prototypes uh, carved on a CNC router, and, but there's still a lot of hand finishing involved. And that's, that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to make, I didn't want to have to do all of this hand finishing. I love working with my hands, but I don't like cutting my hands, which so looks like I'm about to do in this photo here. Um, so these work great as prototypes. And then um, looking at other materials, type is usually made out of wood or metal, uh, for letterpress printing that is. And I did have these plastic types and I thought, huh, plastic, yeah. Uh, so I looked into options and uh, as you can see here, Kickstarter seemed to be the only way to be able to make a feasible plastic type by enlisting a injection molding company. Um, if anybody's looked into doing injection molding, it's not uh, an inexpensive venture. Um, but launching the Kickstarter actually 
made it happen. Um, so what started out as a personal project, basically threw it out there and said, anybody wants to be part of this? Came up with a pricing scheme. This is a very simplified version of what happened. Um, but it actually worked. So I was interested in coming up with a title. So Verso Tiles was, was my initial idea. And even the 3D printing blocks were flippable. So you could print a positive on one side and a negative on the other. And I thought this, this would be, again, kind of a material saving letterpress um, tool. So actually looked into other um, options for uh, molding a two-sided printable block. And by this time, I had enlisted the help of Jen Farrell from Starshape Press in Chicago. She's a letterpress printer, and she was kind of fascinated with this project. And she had a friend who was a, a product designer, and so this was one of the proposals he put together. And then a second proposal for a two-sided block that would allow the base to be um, reciprocal and accept the top, any two blocks to be put together to make a type high block. Um, this proved to be pretty difficult to make molds. Um, so we got as far as making prototypes out of wood, out of 3D printed material, and ultimately um, having aluminum molds made at an injection molding plant. And the process, uh, I, I had wished I had more student involvement. This was, this was a project I did over, uh, mostly over summer. Um, we have a letterpress lab at Wells, and the, the couple students who were involved were utterly fascinated, but if they could have gone on trips to the injection molding plant and just, just talking to people who have no idea why you're making these things, they, they have the ability to make it, but communicating to them, why is it, why are we doing this? Um, that, that took a while to explain. Also, why the blocks had to be perfectly level and, and not have any give, so when you put ink on them and printed them, they would, they would print properly. So we had to come up with a couple different uh, systems for developing a, a structure that would hold the block. And, um, and so, uh, most of this, I want to, uh, during q and I will explain a little bit more if you have specific questions. There's so many details I was thinking about that I couldn't fit into this, this, this time slot. But one thing I am going to do after the Q&A is I have these booklets to hand out. So this, is, this was uh, the original, original blocks you see here were shipped out to Kickstarter backers and other people who were interested in using these as letterpress printers. What I didn't fully appreciate is the educational component of how these could be used in a, in a setting to actually teach um, the basics of letter formation. And um, I just figured they're out here in the world. You know how to put alphabets together. You can make alphabets. Well, when people received them, they didn't quite know what to do with them. They said, do you have a map? And uh, this was actually the first thing I did with them. So you could call this typographic. It's using typographic DNA. It's using the, the vernacular forms. Um, and these are what other people had, had used the blocks for. So there were sort of things happening that weren't strictly typographic, but people wanted uh, uh, some guidance. And so as the blocks were being presented at workshops, I realized how these could be used in a, in a group setting. And this particular image is from uh, University of Arizona, Tucson. And what started out as individual projects turned into these really amazing interactive group projects. So this large poster was made just by using the blocks along with other type high materials. And this particular project was in um, Bristol, England uh, earlier this year. Again, um, not going into a shop and not knowing what kind of presses would be there, I realized that these have the ability to, to adapt to quite a few different uh, printing situations. So thinking about putting out um, more blocks into the world, we basically sold out of our initial pressing, decided to do more and actually offer um, some guidance on what to do with these things. So that's where this booklet came along. So there's actually um, sort of maps of how, how you can put together alphabets um, and a few other um, 
suggested uses. But I found things like this, where it was totally unexpected use. Um, just picking up these materials, putting ink on them, and, and using them as a raw, almost like a paintbrush. Uh, every time I've done a workshop, there's always been surprises, and there's, what's been really interesting is how the, the team dynamic works. I would, was always afraid everybody would want to do their own thing and not, you know, not share. But because of the limited amount of these shapes that are in a set, they re sort of require a, a certain type of cooperation and collaboration that I found to be really interesting. So this, uh, as I said, this is the booklet right here. So now that we're presenting a new version of this uh, set of blocks with including a booklet, decided to go back to the materials that actually were used in the creation of the blocks themselves. So initially it was a digital font and like maybe somebody could use that. And then the 3D printer files. And so a couple of people asked about it and said, sure, we'll send you the files. So now we're actually putting this all together in basically a kit. And then I realized the last step, we made a laser cut stencil. So you basically have a digital font, uh, STL files for 3D printer, uh, stencil, you can use a pencil, and, and, and then the physical blocks themselves. So there's four different ways that people can work with these shapes to prototype, to build, uh, print additional blocks if you run out. Um, and so the one thing I don't have yet is um, a set of lesson plans and curriculum of how to use these. The idea is almost there. And I don't know if anyone has, I think a few people in the room have used these blocks um, with letterpress printing being a more, um, uh, more common, increasing in, in design education. Um, I think these blocks have, on the verge of something, and so I'm asking for your help. If anyone is interested in helping develop some lesson plans, um, like I said, and being an educator is not my primary function. It's one of my many functions. Um, but how these can be used uh, for both young groups of children and um, it, it's, um, it's exciting. And um, I brought a set that's sitting on a table back there, and I have these as well. So after the Q&A, I will uh, gather around and you can grab one of these, and you can see the blocks themselves. But if you're interested in talking more about it, I'll be around for the next few days, and you can grab me and we can talk about it. So I guess uh, I'm probably early, so we can cede the time to uh, the group Q&A. Thank you.